Hello and welcome to this webinar on Vibriosis brought to you by Leading Sheep and the Livestock Biosecurity Network. My name is Sarah Jane and I'm the Regional Manager for LBN in Northern Australia. Vibriosis is caused by the bacteria Campylobacter, therefore it's sometimes also known as Campylobacteriosis. In cattle, Vibriosis is a venereal disease, which means it's spread by sexual activity. The bacteria are found in the bull, in semen, the penis and the prepuce, and in cows the bacteria are found throughout the entire reproductive tract. The bacteria are spread through sexual activity or through artificial insemination where hygiene practices are poor. In sheep, the disease is a little different. It's generally spread through ingestion of the bacteria, not venereally, and is picked up from grazing pastures or drinking water contaminated by faeces, placental or aborted materials from infected animals. While the bacteria will die quickly in a dry environment, they survive much longer in cool, moist conditions. Hence, we see this in southern Australia, including Tasmania, and in New Zealand most commonly. Abortions onto moist ground around watering points or soaks may rapidly spread the disease to the rest of the sheep flock. The increased length of survival of the Campylobacter bacteria in the cool, moist conditions explains why winter and spring lambing flocks are most at risk of infection. Although there are generally no clinical signs in an infected bulls, in cows it has the major potential for productivity impacts through abortion and infertility. In a naive herd, or a herd that hasn't been exposed before, conception rates can drop to as low as 40%. Once exposure occurs, some immunity in cows and heifers can develop, but reinfection is possible once immunity wanes. Often you will see permanent infertility in females that have contracted uterine infections in up to 10%. Ovine campylobacteriosis, also known as vibriosis and epidemic abortion of sheep, causes epidemics of abortions, hence is aptly named. Susceptible ewes come in contact with the Campylobacter bacteria in contaminated feed or water. The bacteria enter the bloodstream and pass to the uterus where they multiply and infect the placental membranes. Abortion then occurs one to three weeks after the infection. Infected ewes that deliver full-term lambs may have a poor milk supply, which further contributes to the weak lambs and increased perinatal deaths. Abortion rates as a result of infection can range from 5 to 50% and you will see sometimes further production losses through ewe deaths that have contracted uterine infections. A flock in a cool moist environment with high number of abortions can exacerbate the contamination of the bacteria on pasture and predation can further spread the aborted materials, placenta or dead lambs which will potentiate the infection. A flock can also become infected through the introduction of carrier animals, animals where the bacteria are persisting in the intestines and being shed in the faeces. This also potentiates the contamination of both the pasture and the water supplies. Prevention in cattle is ideally all about vaccinations. There are five options for cattle that range from not vaccinating any to vaccinating all bulls, heifers and cows, depending on the value of the herd. Vaccination is an initial two-shot course, four to six weeks apart, and then a yearly booster. Ensuring new bulls are vaccinated prior to arriving on your property is best by security practice, and this can be supported by the vaccination declaration on a cattle health statement. Fibriosis is also a vaccination that will often cause a vaccination reaction. So often bulls that have been vaccinated and cows that have been vaccinated will have a vaccination lump. Culling older bulls helps reduce the risk of passing the infection onto heifers, perpetuating the cycle, especially in the unvaccinated herds. In a herd where Vibrio is present, eradication is possible. We're not going to cover this today, but there is a fact sheet available and you can contact me if you'd like more information on that. In this slide, I'll just draw your attention to some of the diseases highlighted in the recent MLA disease prioritization, prioritization study. You'll see both botulism and vibriosis are diseases that have been raised in this study. You will see that for both botulism and vibriosis, there's both a prevention cost and a production cost associated with the disease. 
in vibriosis, you will see that the prevention cost or the cost of vaccination is much lower than the production cost or the potential for losses if the disease occurs in the herd. For sheep, the vaccination options include vaccinating maiden ewes, vaccinating ewe lambs if you're going to join them, or undertaking an annual booster to adult ewes and ewe lambs on stud properties. However, this is unlikely to be economical in a commercial enterprise. This vaccination protocol is also two doses, four to six weeks apart pre-joining, and if you have a high value flock, then a yearly booster as well. Prevention strategies for sheep include improving the exposure of naive sheep prior to being joined. So running maiden ewes with older ewes before mating is one measure you can take. Also, biosecurity measures such as protecting water supplies from contamination, um, using reticulated water therefore, rather than letting the sheep water at springs and dams, cleaning troughs regularly in case predation has spread matter into the troughs, and also undertaking other biosecurity measures such as pre-purchase vaccinations for introduced animals, induction protocols including quarantine, and undertaking predator control activities. If you have any questions about vibriosis, please contact me. My email is sjwilson at lbn.org.au. I've also provided some resources on vaccination from MLA, Making More From Sheep, and the Future Beef websites. Thank you for listening to this webinar on vibriosis. Please get in touch if you have any questions.